our first guest tonight is the uh, first player for the Sydney South Melbourne Swans combined teams to reach 300 games. He's also in the Indigenous Team of the Century. Please put your hands together for Michael O'Rourke. Welcome to the show. That's, um, <laughs> I just, uh, this, uh, that's like, I'm having a flashback to when I was a... Uh, a kid going to the football. It's like a the duffel, duffel coat. It's like a duffel coat, yeah. isn't it? But it's a, it's an upmarket. It's like uh, I didn't have one, so I've got you? one now. You, you, you put your name on the back and your number and all that My sort of name. stuff. Yeah, put your own name <laughs> on it. Yeah, why not? Uh, welcome to the show. Um, you're, you're getting a bit of publicity in, in the last year or so. Um, no, it wasn't anything weird. You just looked, <laughs> you looked at me like you were an NRL player. Where are you going? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, good publicity in the fact that, I mean, you've done the series where they, they traced your family roots on, on SBS, didn't they? Yeah, I was uh, very, very lucky enough to do the Who Do You Think You uh, series, and it was, um, I suppose, a really emotional, uh, it was a fantastic journey to be a part of. And yeah. To find so much about it, uh, certainly, obviously, my family, um, and sort of retracing their footsteps and, and meeting all these different people I've never really had the, the chance to sort of get to mingle with back in Adelaide. Um, obviously moved to Sydney a long, long time ago to play football, so I missed out on a little bit of that, and um, to be able to to go back and, and have a bit of a look was, was unbelievable. Yeah. Now you, um, well, I'm, a, I'm an Adelaide boy like you are. We, uh, well, a lot of people don't stay in Adelaide, do they? <laughs> when, <laughs> when you have dreams and goals. Uh, no, but uh, you, you played Central Districts there, didn't you? Yeah, in so Central. obviously all my junior stuff I played in Adelaide and um, was lucky enough to move over here in Sydney when I was about 17, just turned 17, to play obviously with the Sydney Swans. And, um, do you remember the old I, woolen jumpers? Yeah, had got, yeah got one of those, or yeah. a couple of those. But it was, you know, when I got here, I didn't uh, think I'd last too long. I thought maybe a year or two. Um, I remember the sort of the the training days and um, the pre-season was really tough and very, very homesick and sick. I was the eldest of uh, six kids and um, I, I remember ringing mum up and saying, look, I've had enough of Sydney, I want to come home and, and um, Sydney's not for me. And yeah. she just said, look, you, you can't come home, you've, you've got to stick it out. <laughs> and um, I said, no, well, I was too we've already We've already rented your room out. At, well, yeah. it, exact, that's a, what well, she said. Yeah. said, uh, obviously, we have a big family. And she said, no, your uh, bed's now your cousin's living in it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, he's using all your, ex -cl all your clothes. And so yeah. good luck in Sydney. So that's the worst much. thing about having the big family, the extended oh, family. Yeah, all absolutely. The, the, yeah, all of a sudden, someone else moves in there. Yeah. No, yeah. it was, look, uh, I mean, it's 18 years now, I think. Uh, my time in Sydney, but I didn't mm. think I'd be here here for that long. You went through a lot of uh, different eras at this point. You were the Edelston, I guess. No, nah, not, um, <laughs> nah, not that old. No, not that old. I, did, I, I think I was 13 at that stage. Um, uh, no, the doctor, he was long, long before I got here. Was, yeah. uh, so 95 got here, and, and it was the same year as uh, Paul, uh, Paul Roos, obviously one of the Swans yep. great coaches, and, and Tony Lockett. So that, that yeah. same year, and um, we were able to play. And, and now you, you weren't as big as you are. Now, no, no, back no. then, of, uh, and then playing next to Plugger, he, he's a bit oh. of a mountain, isn't he? Uh, he's unbelievable. I mean, you yeah. can pick fights and he'd finish them off. So it was really one yeah. of those things where. Um, <laughs> uh, Imagine how many games or goals he could have got if he'd never got suspended. Oh, look, I mean, he's obviously yeah. one of the all time greats. And yeah. um, Could you hear him coming up behind you? Because I hear a lot of football players, they say, they said you could hear him just like oh, yeah, breathing absolutely. through his. Yeah, or he's nose like, or, it, pretty yeah. much, it was, yeah. uh, he's such an intimidating man. and. Uh, yeah. And like I said, you, you you walk ten feet tall when you're sort of playing right yeah. next to him, and uh, they, were, they just intimidated players when they actually came out to stand next to him, and you can just yeah. see they were absolutely petrified of him. Yeah. Um, as an eighteen-year-old at that stage playing, it was it was unbelievable. Yeah, There's probably a few people in that that era as well that came after Paul Kelly and yeah. So um, Kel was uh, a couple of years before, and then um, Derek Kickett, who you'd know. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So a lot of great players have been through the place, and then yeah. um, obviously us younger guys coming through, um, myself and Brett Kirk and Adam Goulds, Leo Barry, and these types of players. Um, I, I guess try to bring a little bit of success to the t um, to Sydney. Um, now, well, you eventually got it in uh, 2005. Yeah. yeah, it was a great great year. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about 2006? We, you, you, <laughs> we don't talk about those things. Don't you? Yeah. But but if 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 West Coast were drug tested. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say No, 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 that, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was obviously nice to get in the grand final, don't they? Yeah, um, oh, look, I mean, 2005, we won, um, obviously a close margin, and it's the first time we've won anything for about 70 odd years, and yeah. so our, our club's had some great players, but really starved the success with, um, with the team, and then obviously go, to, uh, the next year in 2006, we lose by a point, and, and I mean, 
you hate losing best times. Mm. You lose by a point, you know, it's really difficult to take, but to lose a grand final by a point. Yeah. Um, it took a lot of beers to uh, try to get that out of the mind. And, um, yeah, look. Well, that's changed as well now. I mean, I think, I'm not sure again, it's a different era that people are drinking and smoke at half time. Back in the old days, yeah. yeah. I mean, again, um, not at AFL level, but certainly yeah, when you yeah, were growing yeah. up, you used to see the old man or, you know, having a puff in a... In and country that. towns. Yeah, I mean, football, it's fantastic. Yeah. No, they still do it in some of the country towns yeah. when you go back and visit. But um, certainly for at AFL level, I mean, they're really... Um, you've got to be at your absolute peak in fitness and whatnot, but... Um, well, again, that's probably something that changed in your your time. There is oh, you all go, of a sudden you got players got GPSs and tracking machines. Yeah, and yeah, what's their heart rate going? And yeah. how many people did they do this to? And yeah. you know, it's oh, how do you keep track? Do, do you oh. you're worried about that as a player, or is that something that you go oh, let the boys up in the box? No, well, about that. the GPS. Is, I mean, as you said, the tracking. I've actually got one now. My missus makes me wear it wherever yeah. I go, <laughs> um, just just to keep tabs on me. Um, <laughs> But no, look, you, you, it's scrutinised and kids are coming into the game and I went from training once a week to training twice a day every day and it was, it's such a demanding sport. I mean, not everybody can play it and it's, uh, I certainly struggled in early days. But it's, uh, you sink or swim. Yeah. And, um, Did you have uh, to get interviewed after the, you know when the, the TV channels, you've just played a game, you've been playing for two and a half hours. And straight after the game, you've won. They'll yeah. come out with a camera and a microphone. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> yeah, but. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, it's, it's, that's what you want to say. And then you've got to, um, you know, a lot of guys do get caught out. But I just think, let somebody have a breath first. And, yeah, oh, look, yeah. I mean, they're trying to catch a... I mean, yeah. they've only got a short period of time to be able to interview players, and uh, you understand that. And um, I mean, at the start of the season, they go through all the protocols of what's going to happen after games, what time you have to run out, and... There's yeah. someone for every, I mean, pretty much every minute before you uh, actually run out the ground until you come off and you're all accounted. And, um, but that's the game. It's, it's a billion dollar industry. And, um, you know, I think the average a, uh, wage of a, a, an 18-year-old coming in nowadays is like 150,000 plus. So, I mean, that's as an 18-year-old coming yeah. in. So you oh, haven't yeah. even played a game yet. And I remember my first contract was seven grand. It was, yeah. you know, compare that to, to today's yeah. players. But, um, wow. Yeah, yeah I, um, I think I've missed the boat there. <laughs> I heard you're a pretty good player. Um, you know, I played in a league once in Adelaide, like, you know, the A6, Amateur League. So you got the, what have you got, the SNFL, then you got something else and something else, then Amateur League. Yeah, the blokes can't play. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> where I was. I was right there. You know, guys get out of prison, their first game back, <laughs> boom. Oh, yeah. I was disheartened. We did play a game once. I was playing for Fitzroy. I kicked, uh, I kicked one goal, mm. and that was the, the team's whole score. One goal. And yeah, the, other got the other team got 20. But <laughs> I didn't get in the best players. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I was goal. like, the only person to kick a goal. Oh. You know, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, look, I mean, it's certainly, a, as a kid dreaming of playing AFL footy is, you know, kicking the ball in at seven, eight, nine, ten years. Be able to do that for pretty much, um, you know, 16, 17 years was, was an unbelievable ride. Well, those so. days gone, though, you, well, you want to play for 18? Remember, you, you like, you grow oh, up thinking, I want to, I support I was, that team, I want to play. Yeah, yeah I was a just... massive Carlton supporter, yeah. massive Carlton supporter. And, um, as a kid, you're, um, you know, it's what, what you're idolised and the players have played for them. And, um, Who was your when, favourite Carlton player? Oh, Stephen Coonan, yeah. obviously a South Australian legend at Carlton. And um, all of a sudden, you, if you, be, you know, you, you go through the junior ranks and rep sides and whatnot. And if you become any good, they come knocking on your door and introduce yourself to your parents and, and say, we're interested in you guys or you coming to play for our team. If, if you go into the draft and you play well for the rest of the year, this is what will happen. And Carlton was a real, uh, one of the teams that knocked on the door yeah. and um, couldn't believe it. So all my Christmases had come at once and they said, we're going to draft you at pick number 41. And, and I went, fantastic, how good's this? I'm going to live in Melbourne. Um, and and this, the rest is history. Yeah. Um, but the other team was obviously Sydney. He came and I was like, well, the Swans are shit at that stage. And yeah. I, I had no idea. No, I used to go to all their games. I'd, yeah. I'd sit out in the outer there Absolutely. by myself. And was... there'd, be, there'd be me and the dancing girls. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just chatting. Um, <laughs> because they weren't very busy. Because they had to dance every time Sydney got a goal. So they didn't dance much too at often, all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, didn't, we didn't win too many games. And, yeah. um, but again, that's, that's probably a good thing. We had, um, we had, we had Willie Anderson on because he's a big Bulldog supporter. Yeah. And I said, I said, the good thing about it is you've always got hope. When you haven't won a grand final, I was trying to jeer him up yeah, a bit. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but you don't, do you? You don't know if it's ever going to happen, do you? You no, want it to happen, but... Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I was lucky enough to play in it in 96 as a, 
I think it was a 19 year old and um, played in the grand final against the, the North Melbourne Kangaroos at that stage and there was uh, I think it was 98,000 people watching the game and yeah. we lost that one we lost that one you know, by a bit and I was just we had blokes crying after the game and I thought well as a sort of a young and you know, dumb kid, I thought, don't worry about it, we'll be back next year. But yeah. <laughs> it was 10 years later till we actually returned to the to the big stage again. And um, as you mentioned, the 2005 grand final and bringing the cup through to uh, George Street and there was 70,000 people yeah. hanging out windows. And um, uh, that whole week was still a blur. I, I, you know, we walked into every bar and club literally in Sydney and... Um, people finally knew who you were. And absolutely. Because <laughs> um, yeah. the Melbourne media, they still treat... Uh, Sydney people, like you do watch the football and they still treat Sydney people like they don't know what's going on. Oh look, I mean, I think that's a, a part of why we love Sydney because yeah. people, you know, they don't give a rat's about Michael Lock and Adam Goods or yeah. Barry Hall because around the corner is Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman and they don't give a rat's ass about us. Yeah. <laughs> so it's fantastic. I mean, I mean, Unless you're I'm Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman, because they've got to look around the corner and go, hey, <laughs> yeah. Barry Hall and Michael O'Loughlin live there. Yeah. Well, she's actually been to a few of our games and come down and, and introduced herself to the players, and yeah. it's amazing the people you meet. But, um, you know, like, coming from Adelaide, you know how obsessive the people are in Adelaide about yeah. their footy, and Melbourne's the same. When we go down there, you, you can't move. Yeah. Um, people ring the hotels. It's just ridiculous of what... Um, uh, some of the people actually get up to to come and meet. Um, some I know. Guys. Imagine the stuff that you could actually tell. <laughs> um, <laughs> S- Sydney big enough for two teams? Yeah, I think so. Uh, certainly, the young guys coming through and uh, being able to—it's another spot for those guys to fulfil their dreams and you know and mm. make a career at playing AFL footy. Now, if this team wasn't here, there's 40 spots that necessarily you know where where they go. So yeah. they have to go and play for another side and. Um, the rivalry will be will be huge, I think, once the, the games start playing. And um, yeah, I think it's you know big brother, little brother stuff. A bit like yeah. Port and, and the Crows. And, yeah. So yeah, looking forward to watching all that. Yeah. All right. Uh, now you've got a foundation with Adam Goods mm. that started up. Uh, tell us about that. Oh, it's, it's just called the Go Foundation. Goods are locked Foundation. I mean, it's just basically what we're doing is, um, I mean. We've done a hell of a lot of school clinics and community visits over the course of our careers and I think it's just going to the next level. Well, how do we help and what do we do? I mean, it's just stuff, people we know. Then if, uh, for instance, um, we, one of the schools wrote in and said we need some uniforms, so we get them uniforms from a mate of ours who does th- exactly that thing and yeah. playgrounds or putting up fences and it's just the people we've met along the journey and just something that, if you know Adam, he's, um, he's, a, he's certainly a very... Um, Honest and respectful, and, and you know, really decent young man. And for us two to be the only guys to play 300 games, and we're cousins, and you know, he's born in, he's born in Adelaide, and Elizabeth as well. And um, so the journeys have been really similar, and um, you know, we're really proud of what we've been able to do. This club's had amazing players, yeah. um, 130 years of age, and it's just you know, at all the great players that have played him, and he's now the the game's record, and we couldn't be prouder. Mm, he's got a few years to go. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's uh, he's a beast. He's, his body's in in ripping nick at the moment. He's I mentioned he got injured, but um, he looks after it fairly well, and um, he looks like he can play for at least another four years, at least. Michael, thank you very much. No, Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Mickey O for me. This <laughs> Ray Herbert will be here after the break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.